In our next project, we are going to restore old photo. Here it is. First, we will start with cropping out this damaged frame. So, select Crop Tool, as we used before. Free. And now we can drag corners to match our photo. Now we can rotate the whole cropping frame like any other object. So we will need, in our case, we need to rotate it a little bit. Okay, almost done. Be precise, don't rush. And here it is. Now you have to confirm or just hit enter. And here's our photo without the frame. Already better. Next step, let's duplicate this layer. Maybe one more time, just for safety. So we got two copies. We're going to use healing tool. So here, spot healing brush tool. Let's start with Path Tool. So, let's zoom in really close. And simply select something that you see and you want to remove and you can move it away. Cover this selection with the background around. Let's try again, over here, and move it away. Okay, that's the one way to do it. Other way, something that you know already, we can use Lasso tool to select area, and then we can go to Fill and select Content Aware Field. And it's gone. This is the technique we use during our other project about removing unwanted objects with balloons. I hope you can still remember that. Fill, content aware, okay. So now you know two techniques to remove scars and damage from your photo. And how about little things, details on face. Now we're going to use healing brush tool. You can Change the size and hardness of this brush. Okay, let's give it a go. See, tap, 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 tap. Okay, much better. Okay, continue using my spot healing brush here. And as you can see, it's not perfect on this long crack. So I'm changing the way I'm doing this. Back to selecting the last tool, fill, content aware. So in this, during this project you will need to switch between tools. You need to observe your results and then switch between tools back and forward. So we got three tools. Selection with lasso and then fill with content aware. You can also use path tool to just drag out the background inside the selection or for smaller pieces use spot healing tool especially on faces like this okay you should zoom in a lot you need 
zoom in so you can see details of photo and then you will be able to remove some unnecessary elements on cracks, noise, dirt from this old photo. For practice you can search for old photo in Google or you can use your own family photo. That would be fun to use real photo from your family. Reconstruct something that got value for you. Okay, and next car is gone. As you can see we got still a lot to do. Okay, I switching again between tools. This is healing brush again. Slowly and steady. In this project we need to be precise. And now I switch to a different tool to have better result, feel, content aware, again, click OK, and it's gone. OK. This photo is really damaged, so we need to keep working on it. As you can see, we already can see some difference between the new version and the old. Feel free to rename your layers by double clicking on them so you can know what is what exactly. So I keep the old unedited version under and I'm working on the new layer, the duplicate we made at the beginning of this class. Remember, use Command or Control plus and minus to zoom in and out. Hold spacebar to move around your project and then try to switch between three tools here. Depends on the result you're getting. For long, damage like this, feel, content aware is perfect. For small spots, try to use healing brush tool instead. Okay, one by one. If you are not happy with result, don't be afraid of undoing your last change. You can go to Edit Undo or hit the shortcut. Control Z or Command Z on Mac. Selection, content aware, fill selection using lossa tool and then content aware fill. Okay, we almost finished in this corner. Don't select too much, small selections, just the damage part. It's why it's important to work with the zoom. Zoom in so you can make small selections. About path tool here. We can use path tool to select element and then we can move out it. We can fill it with the background around. So first select and then drag and drop. You must hold your mouse. Selection with path tool. Now I'm using path tool. Select the big area and drag and drop the background inside this. As you can see, you can overlap selection. Sometimes the small elements, the burnouts, like noise, a very white thing, is we need to remove this too. Okay, this corner is almost done. We can move down. Let's try bigger selection here. Okay, here it is. Really nice. The thing about path tool is you need to find a 
the quality background for you to refill the selection because if you fill the background with if you refill the selection with the wrong background it will look ugly and also copy the damage from that piece of background that you selected now i'm using very small healing tool on girl's face okay we need to be really pre precise on faces so use a really small tool this is brush head a little bit softer than normal and slowly slowly and don't forget to zoom in you can zoom in and zoom out really easy with our shortcuts command plus command minus or control on windows machine okay much better let's continue i'm going to speed up this video so you don't need to wait really long time so just work on your project and then we will after we finish with little scars we're going to adjust some colors and contrast so stay tuned wait a moment i just speed up this video and i will be back in a moment Seems like we were able to remove most of scars and noise from our photo. So, what is our next step? As you can see, this is supposed to be some kind of sky here. Let's make some adjustments. Black and white. So we are sure there's no like this white, dirt, white noise in our photo caused by exposing this old photograph to light. Okay, so now it's truly black and white. Second thing we can do, we can auto contrast. 
okay because we got some wash out colors by probably exposure to sunlight so I do black and white filter again first and then I apply auto contrast as you can see it's much better now now I'm going to use this tool blur tool on the left side we can adjust the size of the tool and hardness and what I'm going to do, I'm going to blur this sky a little bit. It's got a lot of texture. We don't need texture here on this part of the photo. So I'm using this blur tool, just like regular brush, to blur this sky. As you can see here, it's reducing the texture. It's blurring the texture a little bit. Use it only for some background distance elements like sky in this case. Okay, so we're blurring this background a little bit to reduce the texture. This is scan photograph, so we got some additional texture, texture because of that. We don't need that texture here on the sky. It's very subtle difference, but it's look a little bit better with this blur texture in the back. The next thing we can do, we can pick the color of this background using color picker. And then I create a new layer and I will use normal brush this time. Normal brush, very soft brush with this great color I picked up a moment ago. And I just draw over the sky using this gray color of the, of the sky. Just like this, this is a new layer, and now I can reduce opacity of this. So it will also reduce the texture of the sky. Like this maybe, okay. Holding shift, I'm going to select two layers, right click, and you can see something like merge layers. So you can connect them, you will make one new layer from two layers. Okay, that's nice. Let's check it out before and after. Okay, image adjustment, color balance. No, we need hue and saturation. Here we go to put colorize on it. So we can add additional color to create sepia like effect. So don't forget to click the colorize checkbox before, otherwise, you will not see any difference. And now we can adjust the colors, maybe lower saturation like this, to give this little brownish-like sepia effect. Okay. And here it is, our photo before reconstruction. And after, it's much better. Well done, everyone.